I think we'll uh, we'll get started then. So so welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are Data Cubed. We'll introduce ourselves shortly. Um, we're here to talk about uh, embracing AI and getting your business ready to 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 reap the benefits of of, of AI, which there is a lot of conversation about, uh, as you're well aware. But specifically within this session, we're going to talk about uh, data governance and the role it has to play within um, really benefiting from the from the the power of that AI can present itself. Um, governance is a key aspect when it comes to, to, to getting data ready for AI, which is, um, which is absolutely cool. All right. So, uh, we'll get, we'll get going, as I said. So the future is AI and the future is now. So we believe that, uh, that the uh, the future way of the businesses are going to run themselves is going to hinge on technology. Um, data is already uh, the lifeblood of an organization, if you will. It flows through absolutely everything that you do within and within your business, and it is about ensuring that data is geared up and ready to 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 be able to plug technologies such as AI in. And and really um, really leverage it to to grow your business and and to be competitively advantaged. So we um, we have uh, we have our uh, our team at at Data Cubed. We have uh, myself and uh, James Parr uh, is joining joining me on the call here. Um, we will go through the, the the session. We'll make it as practical as we possibly can. Um, as I've already mentioned, please use the chat function to to ask any questions, and we will will go over those questions um, as as best as we can towards the end of the session. Um, but in terms of of getting your sales ready for AI, there are are um, a number of aspects to do with data that are required to um, to be to be geared correctly, and AI can really help you. It can gain you insights. It can um, you can um, uh, automate your organization. Uh, you can discover everything that you need to know um, within your organization that's somewhat often buried within the data. Um, <clears throat> and uh, business leaders who, who embrace it today are the going to be the ones who win in, uh, in the near term. And it's 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 um, no exaggeration to say that that um, that this this is a technical revolution that's, that's happening as we speak. But we are in the early days. So we are Data Cubed. We are a um, uh, data and AI consultancy. Uh, we data is our is our subject matter. We we know it inside out. Our team is made up of engineers, data scientists, data consultants, business consultants. We have a presence globally. We are based in Bristol in the UK. We also have an office in in Warsaw and another one in Wellington. Um, we've been around since twenty seventeen and. Um, uh, we feel uh, the, the, the world has changed in the last 18 months uh, in terms of our business because of AI. Uh, my name is, is Nick Merry. Uh, I am the Product and Partnership Director at DataCubed. So my focus is around building products and propositions that deliver against the needs of our customers. Um, but for the purposes of this webinar today, I am going to um, present a scenario where I am the client and I'm speaking to my consultant at DataCubed, who is James Parr. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everyone. I'm James Parr. I'm head of technology at DataCubed. Um, I look after our technical team. I make sure that our clients get the technical, technical solutions that they need um, in the realms of data and AI. And as Nick said, for the purposes of today, I will be the consultant. So Nick will be my client and I'll be looking to help him uh, go along his data governance journey for the purposes of getting AI ready. Um, here we've got a load of different sort of facts and figures talking about why data governance is so, is so important and how it's a critical concern for, for organizations. So we've got the first one here from Gartner talking around that over 80% of business leaders consider data to be an asset. So that's, that's music to our ears. Um, but only 40% of implemented data governance solutions. 
And that number is likely to be much lower for smaller organizations as well, rather than enterprises. So really there's a recognition there that data governance has got some way to go. Um, we can also see from Experian that data uh, quality is a massive concern for almost all businesses. Um, that's something we've experienced firsthand with our clients that there's an ambition to utilize data and make the best opportunity of data and can often be held back by data quality issues, which is something that data governance can help with. And then we've got Dharma here, which is the Data Management Association, talking about how poor data governance can eat up to 40% of IT budgets. So the fallout from not doing governance well can directly impact um, the bottom line for a business. So here we've got a list of things that might be sort of talking points or discussion points um, to think about when you're talking about how well governed is my data now. Uh, and that includes how well protected, how secured, um, and what kind of quality am I looking at with my data in my organization? So it's, not, it's worth thinking about who are the owners of data in my organization? They might be officially nominated owners or they might be owners by default, but who's looking after my data? Who's accountable? for any data quality issues or data protection for data in an organization. Um, what are the roles and responsibilities when it comes to governance? We'll touch on these in a moment. Um, myself and Nick talk about these in a bit more detail, but there's some quite well-established governance roles and responsibilities to make sure that data is governed well, protected and of high quality. Do I have a data catalog? That's something again, we'll go into more depth soon. But a data catalog is effectively somewhere to store a lot of information about your data to make data accessible to everyone around the business. And having one of those is a bit of an indicator as to how far along your data governance journey you might be. Um, do you have any data policies in place? That might be data governance policy. It might be a security and access policy. Um, there are numerous different data policies that can come under the remit of data governance or have, we'll have to work hand in glove with them. And one of those may well also be an AI policy in recent times. Um, what data quality processes are in place at the moment, ranging from, oh yeah, I've got a data quality dashboard looking at one of my key systems, the full to the full gamut of a full data quality framework in place to make sure that data quality is an ongoing concern. Um, are we actively managing data risks? So are we proactively making sure that data is protected and secure. Um, is your data compliant? Is uh, personally identify, uh, identifiable information protected, identified? So is it easy for people to understand when they're working with sensitive data? Um, and am I compliant from a sort of GDPR or equivalent perspective? Is our data secure? Is there um, a deliberate consideration or how data security is managed and a model that we're relying on to do that. Uh, and is data backed up for recovery and, and, and uh, disaster management sort of reasons. And also making sure that if someone was to make a mistake, can we get, can we go back to where we were and have sort of no regrets about um, our data being backed up? Um, so I think anyone that's using data in an active way or making use of data for reporting, analytics, or even monetizing data has to have some kind of a data governance framework in place to ensure that data is used appropriately and is um, used to its full potential as well. So there are various different levels to which you can go into data governance, but we would be recommending that everyone at least have one eye on this as soon as they start to use their data for these reasons. So how do you get your organization ready for AI from a governance perspective? Um, and here I'm just gonna talk about what data governance sort of is, just to take a step back. Um, when we talk about data governance, we're talking about the measures and policies in place to ensure that data can be trusted um, and is being used appropriately. Um, and having good data governance in place will help to avoid data degradation. And by this, we mean making sure that your data quality and trustworthy data is an ongoing concern. So there's not just a one-off fix to data quality, for example, and then data is allowed to degrade after that because there's no framework in place to make sure that data quality is maintained, monitored on an ongoing, ongoing basis. We also want to, we will also be able to mitigate risk by having good data governance in place. We'll understand what data we have, what kind of data it is, 
who's got access to it, who should have access to it. We'll have policies and processes in place to make sure that the right people are looking at the, at the data they need to and no more. Um, good data governance will also help to improve access to data. So one of the key things that we see for almost all of our clients is that there is some level of siloing of data around the organization. So people might not even know that there is data available for them to make decisions or to report on because it's just hidden away somewhere. Um, having something like a data catalog that's easily searchable by anyone in the business will help to improve access to the data because they've suddenly found that it exists. And this links to point four as well by having good understanding of what data exists and what that data is and making it quite searchable and visible will help to under improve understanding of that data. And a data catalog can also have definitions of data and KPIs uh, and everything relating to data within it so that people can understand what it is that they're looking at. Yes, this field is called X and it means this. And there is a similar field called something very similar in a different system that means something slightly different. So it's just improving that understanding and under and helping to make the best use of data in all these different systems. And finally, data governance is sort of, Nick has alluded to already, data governance will lay the groundwork for making sure that you can make the best opportunity of the data in your organization. Um, this might be from just normal standard monthly reporting through to more, uh, you know, forecasting, analytics, more sophisticated data science activity, and also the new wave of AI. If your data is not in a fit state, you're not going to make the best use of the technological shift that's happening at the moment. So making sure that your data is where it should be, you understand it, is all um, secure and robust and available, will help to make sure that you can make the best opportunity of these new developments. At DataCube, we've got a data maturity score that we work through with our clients and is something that's available to everyone at datamaturityscore.com. Um, so if you wanted to take your test and see where you fit in here, make sure you visit the website and that's something we can share afterwards. Um, so governance is one of the six pillars within our data maturity score. Um, we can see that actually a lot of the other pillars are going to be supported or, and underpinned by governance. So for example, risk management, making sure our data is secure and data is protected, data governance plays a key role here in by having the policies and processes in place to make sure that the right people have access to the right data. Um, quality is underpinned by governance in that governance will make sure that data quality is an ongoing concern. There'll be frameworks in place to make sure that data quality is monitored on an ongoing basis. So we're not just taking a load of remedial action, but not addressing the root cause and not monitoring how that data quality has changed over time. Um, we also have analytics. Analytics, the best, uh, you won't get the best outcome from analytics unless your data is trustworthy. Uh, and you've got the data available to do the analytics in the first place and which government governance can really help to support all of that activity. Um, we also have culture. So governance activities can actually help to bring up the data literacy literacy within an organization. Um, if a data governance project is go going on where it's collecting a load of information about what data exists and, and how it should be monitored and from a quality perspective, having those conversations around the business helps to elevate the the conversation of data within all of those different uh, business functions and can help to increase that data literacy, the buy-in for how important data is just through those data governance activities. That's quite a nice secondary outcome from data governance uh, projects and initiatives. Uh, and then the final pillar that isn't governance is architecture. And actually architecture is more of a supporting role for governance. If your architecture allows all your data to be in a single place, quite well structured, quite searchable, that underpins having good data governance on top of that, because there is one place to look for where people are accessing data. There's a one place to point your data governance catalog to. Um, it, it's more of a supporting role for governance in this one. Uh, and then finally, we've got the data governance pillar that we're talking about today. Okay, thank you, James. Um, so we're just going to get into the sort of nuts and bolts of the session now, and um, the way it's going to work is I'm going to play the, the the customer, and I'm going to interrogate, maybe not interrogate, but quiz James um, on the 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 things that I need to do in order to achieve what I want to achieve as a customer that's relevant to data governance. So the scenario is is that I'm a I'm a managing director of a of a B two B 
business to business service organization. And the problem I'm seeing is that we are losing business to competitors because we're not quick off the mark. And the reason we're not quick off the mark is because our data is not so accessible. Um, it's buried. So the answers to what we need to deliver to our customers are buried within that data. So as an organization, we've been making great strides over the last uh, sort of 12 months. We've, we, we've recognized our problem and um, we have been on a bit of a data transformation journey. But how do I ensure the positive impact of our data that is now having remains that way? So I want to make sure that all the work we've done on our data transformation over the last 12 months is apparent and it remains to be apparent and it doesn't degrade. And then my second point is, is that I'm clear on, on the promise of AI as to think that it's all hard not to, but everybody's, it's, it's hard not to, to, to see that. There's been so much talk in the press, but, but how does promise turn into real life, real world results? Um, and that's where I want to get my business. I want to uh, embrace AI to have an impact on my bottom line. Um, but at the moment, I'm not quite sh um, sure on, the, on where that transition is going to come. So what I want to do, I want everybody in my business to be able to benefit from the insight that our data holds. I want them to, to be able to benefit when they need it and have confidence in it so we can get back to our customers quickly with the, the information they require. So that is the scenario. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch from this presentation to a, um, a Miro board that is going to allow us to run the, the, the session more effectively. James, can you see the, the, the board yes. okay? Yes, I can. Thanks, Nick. All right. So I've, I've heard your problem, Nick. And, you know, you've, you've said you've made great strides to transform your organization from a data perspective over the last 12 months. Um, so it sounds like you've got your data into a decent place, um, but you want to make yes. sure that it stays in a decent place. Yes, um, I, I think that we've 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 addressed some of the data architecture issues. We've got our data into a sort of single single source, so we are we feel like we have got our our warehouse in place and we know where our data is, and we've we've made some strides on improving the quality. I guess what I'm fearful of is that. We've made all this effort and, and we need to maintain, you know, that advantage. We don't want it to sort of just disappear again. Yeah. And so one of the things you'll need to think about is making sure that you've got the right roles and responsibilities in place, that there is accountability on that data. So you've got some half decent data going on right now, but whose responsibility is it to look at that data? And that's where we would be talking about, uh, ownership and stewardship of data. So these are two key roles um, within data governance. It's a data owner and a data steward. Okay, so, um, so, the, so just to jump in there. So in order to maintain the quality um, that we've we've worked hard to achieve, we need to set up a, a, a governance framework um, that oversees um, everything to do with it. That's yeah, the, that's right. These kind of roles we'd sort of talk about being part of a data governance office that can be quite a light touch to start with. You know, you're just embarking on your data governance journey. We're not looking to put a full bells and whistles data governance council in place with loads and loads of meetings every month. We look, we're talking about conceptually a data governance office that gives people the right level of support to look after their data properly and make best use of it. Okay. Um, so and then this, this owner and steward role are the, one of the key pieces okay. of that. So that, that's a sort of... Uh not a not a, a a function as such within the business but it's 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 um it's uh, roles and responsibilities that people within the business have when it comes to 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 data and ai that's right so the, the data governance office might have someone there that's knowledgeable in the realms of data governance that, that might be an external organization that might be something that data cube could help with for example because of our experience with data governance projects we might be able to offer you know a part-time support role here so it doesn't have to take someone away from their day job but yes an, an owner and a steward so let's let's bring these into this this box here so an owner and a steward here this would not be their full-time role then they're, they're not a hire to be a data steward and they're not a hire to be a data owner a data owner we would see as being a senior leader so for example you've got a marketing function within the business it would be a senior leader within your marketing function that is accountable 
with the quality and protection of marketing data within that right. function. So if you were to have, um, obviously data is in every function. So you might have a data owner for marketing data. You might have a data owner for finance data. There might be different people. That's right. That's right. And that's where that there's a community there all of a sudden that come under that umbrella of that data governor's office. But that's not their full time role. Um, and actually, because they're, we, the senior leader is important because that owner might need to make decisions on how to improve data quality or make decisions on uh, how data should be protected. Um, and they need that senior position to be able to make those decisions and, and force the issue if they need to. But actually, they won't be doing much hands on work on the data that that's not that's not their role they're sort of authorizing bits and pieces that's where the steward comes in we consider a data steward to be a subject matter expert on the data in their particular business function or domain um and that person is probably someone who already works with the data pretty in a pretty hands-on way whether that be for reporting or just you know as part of their day job that they're in in a business system and wrangling the data so again that's a, that's another activity that you might see that some of the responsibilities that a data steward has, that subject matter expert might be doing that already, but it's just about formalizing that and putting that within a, a structured framework to make sure that this stuff is covered properly. And, and would that person be, for example, um, a, a very senior person or would they be sort of more um, people that, that are getting really hands-on with, with? Yeah, really hands-on. Yeah, not a senior person in this example, no. So someone that's just really familiar with the, the data in their function. Um, we have seen that this might be uh, just someone that's been in, in the business for a few years and really just knows their, their data within their function really well. Um, it's it's It varies from client to client who's the best person to raise for this. But actually, when we've done data governance projects with clients, we have seen that there's very quickly a nominated subject matter expert, like someone can really quickly identify who is the right person to be this steward. And, and when we have done that, when we've had people raise this or you know, uh, recommend this person that they go, actually, I'm doing a lot of this already. I am assessing what kind of data quality we're looking at at the moment. I am reporting on this data. I, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of that already activity already going on. It's just formalizing it. Okay. And then who within that, therefore, would chair the, 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 the data governance office? So, yeah, so this could be someone within the organization. It could be someone like a head of data. It could be someone like a head of IT or a CTO kind of role. Um, it could also be, like I said, it could be us on a part-time basis or a trusted partner that's got experience with data governance that just offers, offers that advice, really, for data owners and data stewards. You know, like, this is what you should be doing as part of your role um, and and also we'll get into some other topics of data governance, but just guiding the the actual work on the ground. But really, the data governance office sort of lead doesn't that doesn't need to be a full time role either. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And so, um, so you know, as I said, I, I want to try. I want to adopt AI. I want to to embed mm -hmm. it within. Um, and this getting getting this structure um, sorted will help ensure that the data is focused on there is attention to it uh, on an ongoing basis yeah and i think part of what would come out of a data governance office and again something we can help with is making sure that there is a data governance policy like it doesn't have to be very heavy it can be something that's fairly light touch to start with it's appropriate to the size of the organization and, and what they want to do at that time but a data, a data governance policy is something we'd recommend you know like what are our principles and our policies and procedures in, that we would recommend that we follow to make sure that data is governed appropriately. We'd also probably recommend if going down the AI route that there is a similar AI policy and they should be hand in glove here. Um, so if I just bring this uh, extra ticket in here with an orange, uh, with a purple color, sorry, to, to hint that that's AI, there's just something to think about. How does my data governance align with my AI strategy? Um, and actually data governance should be perfectly aligned to your data strategy as well. And that's something else to think about as well. Like what is my broader ambition with data and AI in the organization and making sure that governance is totally aligned to that. So you're doing exactly only what you need to do. Okay. From a so you've, perspective. you've got, um, given AI is plugging itself into the data, it's the, it's the data governance, which is, the, is what it all hinges on. But then you've got other added considerations from an, from an AI technology perspective to, to, to govern. 
Yeah, it it you know there's something that is coming up more and more. Data governance is becoming more relevant now because of AI entering this sort of tech space or the rise of AI because it's offering up new opportunities or new things that you could be doing with data. And you won't get the most from that data unless it's trustworthy, accessible, defined well, which is all within the data governance remit. Okay, makes sense. So what's what's next? Um, so we've kind of hinted, you, you mentioned at the start that your data quality is sort of in a relatively decent place right now, but you're worried about it degrading. Yeah. So it's Yes, we, we've. I mean, we've we've made a lot of inroads on that. Um, we identified where there were gaps, where um, um, it, you know we, we were th previously we would be in a situation where we'd go into a meeting, would have a, um, a, a spend half the meeting debating the the metrics rather than the decision that we want to make from the metrics because we're just not we were just weren't confident in it. But we're at a point now where where um, you know we still debate it. But it's for five minutes rather than half an hour. Yeah, but ultimately, there's almost no point in doing reporting if you can't trust the data within the within the report or the dashboard. So, I mean, that's a common that's a that's a common measure, I think, of whether data quality is a problem. Does it derail derail meetings and does it delay decision making? So, pretty common, pretty common problem. So that there's there's sort of two sort of lenses really there's there's data quality yeah you can go away and say okay i've got a problem in this part of my data it needs fixing you can go away and make the fix if you haven't addressed the root cause of the problem that that quality issue is going to come back um so how do you monitor that on an ongoing basis it can be as simple as a you know bi dashboard pointed it pointed at data from some of your key systems right um that in and of itself doesn't necessarily solve the problem either and there's also a question of what data do I monitor? Because actually, if you monitored everything, you just it's just noise. It's, you're not targeting what's really important. And that's where a data quality framework comes in. And this is where data quality links together with governance. Through monitoring in a data quality framework, you're taking data quality as a sort of one-off exercise, a static point in time exercise, to being an ongoing concern and a process to follow for people in the organization and responsibilities as well. Um, so we might put in a data quality monitoring dashboard in place, but actually it's the data steward's responsibility to be looking at that dashboard and dealing with problems at source. So they're very interlinked, the subject of data quality okay. and data governance. So your, your, your quality monitoring your quality framework is going to be presenting um uh on a dashboard whether you how complete your data is or how many errors it's throwing up etc cetera, etc cetera. and so it'd be up to the data steward to be able to then hone in on that to, to investigate when when um anomalies are are appearing yeah that's right and then doing something about it yeah and that that is usually some kind of process change is what's required when there's a data quality problem to prevent that coming back might require a you know a process change. It's not as simple as just going and correcting the data once. You know, for example, someone might have a CRM, and there might be issues with duplication of of customer names. Um, there are systems or tools in place in a lot of CRMs to prevent that from happening when people are entering the data in the first place. And so that's the process change that's needed to get on top of that on an ongoing basis, rather than just monitoring it and point in time fixes. Okay, makes sense. And from what I've read as well, you know, garbage in, garbage out mentality. Data mm -hmm. is preemptive. My quality. next ticket. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly that, Nick. Like, if if you're wanting to get value from data, where's the value if you can't trust it and it's rubbish? Um, you're just going to add cost um, and time and effort into something that's going to deliver zero value. So that's again data quality is ever more important now that people are looking at new ways to, you know, get value from data, whether that be through new technologies such as AI or even just improved reporting and analytics. Yes, because I think what my concern was is that historically it's been the data scientists within the business or, or analysts that um, that know what they're looking at. Whereas where I want to get to, I want to get my whole team being able to access data. And so without needing them to be fully data literate, I want them to still be able to get the insight from it. And if the quality is poor, 
they may not may not know that and then they're, therefore they'll be making the wrong decision off the back of it segue into my next point there actually in terms of how do people know where what data is available and, and what what's usable the next topic we're going to talk about really was data documentation um making data available to people is is kind of is a challenge in and of itself like even if you had the best quality data in the world and you had loads of it how do people know where it is or what's available to them when it comes to reporting or data science activities it's it's so common that data is just siloed all around the business um and there's almost never a sort of single front door for like where to go and find data either you know it's it's often scattered around people know this data is over here it's not necessarily stored in a central place um that's where something like a catalog can help so a data catalog is a phrase or a, a name for a bit of technology really that comes under the topic of data governance and it's just somewhere where information is stored about your data so effectively metadata because it's not the data itself it's information about your data that's stored in the data catalog so for an example it would be in the crm got customer name customer contact details but it won't that's actually right customer yeah. name contact details. it'll just state what what fields we have you've got yeah you've got these tables available to you and within these tables are these columns um you might also store information about your kpis in your business within your data catalog as well um so that's where you know defining not only what data exists but what it is can be part of the data catalog so you've got one place to find data you've also got one place to look to understand what a particular field actually means because obviously okay. a field might be named something in your crm but it's not immediately obvious what that actually means from a yeah. human perspective i think that from what i understand that helps as well with with ai because the definitions need to be a more natural language um that's right yeah and the, you know you'll have to consider how to keep that fresh because obviously, you know, there's a there's an element of you can write the definitions once, but there's nothing to stop them going stale or, you know, someone um, changing a KPI and it needs an updated definition somewhere. But again, that's where a data governance policy procedure and nominated roles can help. You know, like this, just a scheduled activity that these KPIs are checked and the, the KPIs will be owned by a certain business function and that kind of thing. So there's a lot you can do within this to, to make sure that your, your definitions are fresh and usable. And the part of what makes a good data catalog is for like a human to be able to search it easily. So almost like a Google search bar for your data. So they just go into the search bar at the top and say, give me all the information that I have about this topic. And you'll go and find all of the fields, all of the tables, all of the KPIs that match that and are tagged with that that topic uh, and it will bring it all to you and you go okay well that's what data i have in the organization i didn't even know i had that so that's that's where it's bringing that that data to the fore okay i guess that would that be an iterative job it's it's not something you're gonna na nail and complete in one go yeah i mean maybe that's something to talk about now really is we would never recommend an all singing all dancing data governance initiative that covers the entire business at once apart from anything else there's no one size fits all approach to data governance. So it'll be completely bespoke to your organization because it will be, it will have to align to the sort of culture of the organization as well as, as how big it is, what skills are in house, what it intends to do with the data. So we'd recommend something like a data governance pilot project where you take maybe one business function. So I don't know, finance, let's say, and you work very closely with finance and establish so like, you know, a data owner a data steward, um, an interim data governance office. So, you know, support those people in their role and maybe address some data quality problems that you know exist. So that might be a way of identifying the finances that the team to look at first because you know they've got data quality problems and then just live the life during that pilot and go what works and what doesn't from a data governance perspective. What do we need to do and what don't we need to do with the eye, with one eye on how you're going to scale it to the rest of the organisation. Um, so yeah, we definitely recommend only doing what you need to at the current time to make sure this isn't doesn't end up as a bureaucratic exercise or you know put a load of red tape where you don't need it. It's just making that is looking at this more from an opportunity perspective rather than a sort of risk aversion perspective. Okay, perfect. Thank you.
I guess something else that we didn't cover in the data documentation or the data catalog piece is this is where we can start to also collect information about data protection. So listing, okay, this this field here from this system actually contains personally identifiable information, so PII. Um, and again, that can help when it comes to wanting to automate reporting or or putting AI models over the top of your data, you want to make sure that maybe they're not, not looking at that PII data or sensitive data. So that can all be protected in a more st structured way using the catalog. Okay. Okay, so, so metadata to feed AI, this is within the catalog itself? Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what I've just said there or what we've covered and you said, you know, making things human readable, having definitions available, that's then structured in a way that is accessible. You know, you could have something like AI looking at your data catalog directly in a structured way to get this information. So it doesn't have to be passed explicitly by a human anymore. It can find that information and, and work more out of the box. Yeah. So don't use abbreviations and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think... On the sorry, just on the sensitive and personal data, would this also, you know, there's some businesses, uh, ours is, is, is not one of these, but um, uh, are regulated and and so they have to to comply to certain things. Is 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 this within a data documentation sort of sphere? Yeah. So I mean, yes. I mean, you've got then a, a record of all of the data that you have. You've got. Uh, an understanding as well of who's got access to it. That's part of the data, data documentation piece that might be coming slightly more under a data dictionary umbrella, but you will have a log of, you know, who's got access to what and where it all lives, which can be quite important from that compliance point of view. You know, someone requests their data to be removed, you know where it all lives yes. um, and you know what it's all called. Um, so yeah, it can definitely help with that aspect. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, we've covered off I think data access as part of that data documentation, but I guess it's worth re-emphasizing really that the result of data of data being in one place and cataloged in the right way is that it can be easily found for for analytics. And ultimately, uh, this is something that means a lot to Data Cube. Just data is democratized. It means that it's not just within the remit of the person that's looking after the database. It's accessible to anyone around the business because they can get into the catalog and see what data is and isn't available. And so what that also unlocks is people being able to have ideas about what to do with data um, that might not normally be touching it. So this is where sort of pushing the boundaries, competitive advantage, innovation starts to come into play. Yeah, that's right. Because people yeah, so um, and and I think that this is this is where I want to get to with the business, and that's why our AI excites me so much is is enabling people to. To, to query things to either justify something or um or take them down a path that um that presents opportunity uh and it's, it's often buried in, in in our data i feel yeah that makes a lot of sense i think i think the last thing is something we've already touched on is just making sure that there are plenty of data policies in place as well so now you are looking at using data in a new way we, you want to make sure that it's it's treated properly and so you're not only going to unlock the potential of data by having all your data in the right place, you're also going to have appropriate policies in place to make sure that AI is used in a, in a ethical and secure way. You've also, you're also protecting your sensitive data um, and that everything is aligned, that your data governance activity, your AI activity, your policies, they're all aligned because you've really put some thought into place on how to do all this properly. Um, and that's, th we've seen what the result of not doing this properly is, is people ending up going in a panicked way, we're actually going to lock down the use of AI because we can't trust that it's going to be used securely um, in this environment. So people just say like blanket ban on, you know, chat GPT or similar. And so that's really where you don't want to end up. You want to be able to give people the assurance that you're doing it in the right way and that's where these sort of policies and procedures start to come in okay so your ai policy might say something like this data can only be used in this way and therefore when you introduce the technology it's it's for a specific purpose and it, and it doesn't start to to get used um elsewhere where it might be throwing up um uh 
sensitive information that shouldn't be shouldn't be considered in that way. That's right. And it helps you from a co that compliance point of view as well. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you, James. Is there is there anything else to add to that? No, I think I think just to reiterate as well, like this shouldn't be a scary thing. There's a lot of things on the board here, but this we can bite little bites out of this. We can take little bites and slice this up to make it quite achievable in a quite a short period of time. You know, this doesn't need to take years to set this all up. You can get something, a proof of concept or a pilot set up very quickly and race through the fundamentals here quite quickly to get yourself ready for governance and AI. Yeah, it's, it's useful to see it in the sort of these five buckets. So it gives us a, um, puts us on the starting blocks to be able to start to focus in and, and, and you know, without missing something. I guess my fear with data governance is that I embark on it and um, and I miss something, you know, a, a glaring mm. thing that I've, I've never considered before because I'm, I'm, I'm not the expert. All right. Well, thank you for that. So let me just revert back to, to our presentation. So as as James said right at the very beginning of this, um, data governance is is one aspect of of sort of six pillars of of data maturity, and it's important to consider data governance in the context of the other the other pillars, in the context of your data strategy or your, your strategy of your business, because you wouldn't have a data strategy without um, the the wider direction that the business wants to to head in, um, and. We have uh, the ability, or you, you have the ability to to test yourself. Um, it's just head to datamaturityscore.com and it will walk you through a sort of self-serve approach to um, assessing yourself. But if you do have um, questions or if you would like some support on that, we can uh, we can help you. We can we can run a, a, a personalized workshop for it uh, for free um, and it will take about an hour to an hour and a half maximum um, and we're also off the back of this session we'll give you a, uh, a, a sort of data governance assessor so you can start to look at those those pillars that we walk through and uh, and make sure that you, you you're getting your, your your ducks in order so so you're not getting on the starting blocks without um, the, a, the, a full understanding of, of the picture. Uh, right, so we're just going to sort of go into some some questions. Um, just bear with me a second. I'll just pull up what we've been asked. We we did have a few prior to this. So um, one of the questions I have here is, uh, how can we create competitive advantage from improving our data governance? So especially from an SME perspective, uh, when it comes up, when when we're up against the bigger players, the enterprise uh, players with bigger budgets. Um, so how would you answer that one, James? I've got some thoughts, but yeah, I guess just to start off with, I, it's going to be quite easy to get ahead of the curve on this. I think it if you've never done data governance before, it can sound a bit scary and maybe even a bit dry. Um, but actually, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of effort to get set up and, and have some kind of process and policy and framework in place to start with. It really doesn't. Uh, and that will put you ahead of your competitors when you're a small business, because they probably won't have any data governance in place. You'll be able to trust your data in a way that your competitors won't. Um, and you won't have to worry about things like compliance and things at all, because it will be baked in from the start. You'll sort of have data governance by design. Um, so I think just getting set up straight away just makes that all your reporting is going to be easier. All your reporting is going to be much more trustworthy. You're going to be able to make data-driven decisions from the outset. Um, and, it, and it just doesn't need to be that much of an overhead or a scary thing to embark on in the first place. Yes, I think the one of the things that we see with with uh, organizations is uh, when it comes to data is a, is a bit of a fear of it. And um, what data governance does, it mitigates the risks, but it creates the opportunity. And um, so, um, you know, risk management doesn't have to be risk, uh, or it has to be risk mitigation, but it doesn't have to be being becoming risk adverse. It can still contribute to, to opportunity um, uh, that, that a lot of businesses just don't have. Uh, and data governance is the backbone to ensuring that that data is 
a secure and compliant and risk um, mitigated, but is also creating opportunity with the organization to, to, to thrive. Okay, the next question we have is, what are the most cost-effective strategies to implement data governance frameworks for AI? Yeah, I mean, so the, the you don't need a lot of tools in place to start with. Um, so there's not much in terms of cost of technology to get set up. I think really you could probably, you, know, you could work with us within a few hours and come up with an idea of what your data governance policy might look like. And owners and and um, stewards from a data governance perspective, like I said, they might all be doing some of this activity already. You're just formalizing it. So it doesn't need to cost the earth. You can use tools that you're already using for BI to start monitoring your data quality. Um, so, you know, this is a, a lot of data governance is really process and procedure as opposed to a lot of expensive tech. Even a data catalog, you can use pay as you go models now. It doesn't have to cost the earth either. So I think it's more accessible than it ever was really for SMEs to get set up with data governance. I think, as you pointed out earlier on, uh, starting off on one corner of the business, one function, um, so you're not trying to um, boil the ocean on, on day one. And yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the best way, what are the best ways to build internal capacity for managing data governance? particularly when there are no dedicated data governance roles. And I think you've already gone some way to, to, to answer this. Mm. It's, it's not a dedicated role that's required. Yeah, you might you might find that you need some support to understand what how to embed data governance successfully, but that doesn't necessarily need to be a full-time role to do that. And then within the organization, you already have data owners and data stewards waiting in the wings that they don't even know about yet. Um, I think part of the challenge is making reassuring those people that are going to be nominated as owners and stewards that it doesn't need to be a, a big overhead on their day-to-day -day. um that's something that we've seen and it and it doesn't so as long as everyone's invested in the opportunities this is going to bring i think everyone can get brought in pretty quickly what do you think the biggest um biggest positive impact data governance can have when it comes to adopting ai no, I think making sure that your data is actually usable, discoverable, and trusted, it's just essential for making that AI success. Like you want to be able to build a valuable AI sort of use case. Like that's almost one of the key things that you know people are trying to do at the moment is come up with that valuable use case. It's going to be significantly less valuable if you can't trust the data that's going into the front of it. Yeah. So it is really essential to that. Okay. And are, are there any um uh, you talked about catalogs and uh, being able to get those online sort of relatively cheap. Are there any other sort of key technologies that would be useful for for data governance? No, I think, as I said, a BI, a BI tool just to monitor your data quality on key systems and understanding how to do that is something we'd recommend as well. But um, really, that's it from a technological standpoint. I mean, you, you can even get started on a very bare bones like data dictionary or, or other governance sort of tools in Excel to start with proof of concept. Um, so yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't need to cost the earth to get started. Okay, okay great, thank you. Um, I think we're going to, to to pause there. So as I said, we've we've had um, we will provide some 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 follow-up uh, information to this and we'll make this this conversation available so you can make sure that uh, those those key buckets for approaching data governance are clear um we do have um we are working our, our way around our data maturity assessment uh, pillars on how they are um going to support the the uh, embedding of ai within your organization so we have a few more workshops um or webinars rather coming up uh, the next one is around navigating risk for your ai journey which is on the 13th of june so please uh, please join us um and we will we will follow this up with an invite anyway so um thank you for your time uh, is anything any wise words to finish off with with there james yeah, just get in touch. Like it said, it doesn't have to be scary, and we've done it before. So uh, let us help. Yes, don't don't fear the data. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, and um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.